Welcome to the Dawn Jarvis Show with Dawn Jarvis, the diverse nurse. And in this podcast, we will be talking about healthcare, self care, diversity, careers, and well being from a black woman's perspective. If you're a person of color, an ally, partner, or employer of person of color, and interested in a diverse perspective on health, self care, and well being, then this is the podcast for you. If you are ready to turn your expertise into that thing you have always wanted to do and are not prepared to let potential barriers or difference hold you back, then you are definitely in the right place. Join registered nurse, coach and motivational speaker Dawn Jarvis, the diverse nurse, to get the advice, inspiration, strategies and tough love you need to manifest the life career or organization that you want and need in this diverse world. We're really happy that you're here. So if you're ready, let's get on with the show. So welcome, Simone. And um, Simone and I know each other quite well. We met in Florida in January this year and we've become firm friends. Um, Simone and I usually talk every Sunday because we are accountability partners together. So it's uh, my absolute pleasure to work, welcome her to the show. Hi, Simone. How are you? Hi, Don. I'm doing well. Congratulations on your show. Thank you so much. I realise that it's like really stupid o'clock in the United States. What time is it there with you? Well, yeah, we call it oh dark thirty here. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's six eleven a.m. It is still dark, and um, yeah, this is not this is not my uh, normal wake up time. However, I have. You know, you have to make allowances and then we're talking about um, speaking across the waters. And Absolutely. The and, yeah. the <laughs> and also, right. isn't it fantastic that we can talk like this? I think it's really fantastic that we're friends and uh, that we're quite good friends. And I would yeah. count you as a personal friend. And we only met, I met nine months ago and we only talk on Zoom. So isn't the Internet wonderful? It is. It's so wonderful. It it brings people closer together. Definitely. So um, the floor is yours, Simone. You can tell everybody who you are and what you do. Well, I am Simone Henry. I created a company called Eshe Music. And Eshe is uh, an old Middle English word. It means it means what? Uh, Everlasting, perpetual, forever. I didn't know that. Um, That's good. Yeah. And I, I thought it was a great, a great word for um, for a company that promotes Christian music. And, um, you know, I started it back in 2014 as a as a resource service. And um, recently after <laughs> after, you know, going to that that um, to that weekend that you were, where you and I met, I turned it into a coaching program. Yeah, that's and fantastic. And now, <laughs> um, now after going through uh, the coaching thing and learning how to be a coach, um, I am combining that with what I originally wanted to do and um, putting more of the resources and the done for you work back into it. So. Um, you know, in launching a new service in October. I just haven't figured out what to call it yet. Well, um, I thought I had a name. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think the name was going to be? Well, the I was so excited about the name Eshe VIP. Yeah. But um, as you know, our coaching, um, our, our coach had, had her uh, virtual retreat this weekend. And I pitched that name to a few of the ladies and they were like, yeah, what does that even mean? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's always, so um, Rosetta and I um, share, share um, we're in a mastermind together um, with the um, coach and mentor, I guess, and Rosetta Thurman, who is a, an incredible woman. So um, she's all about the brand. And um, one of the reasons this is called the Dawn Jarvis Show. And um, we've had to really think about, you know, what you call your neck, what you call yourself as a business and, you know, what that says when you put it put it out there. But it is quite difficult to take it on when you've got, um, when you're quite attached to a name isn't it yeah yeah I've been attached to my company name I've been putting it all all over everything <laughs> well that's okay know. 
it's okay <laughs> we can change it so what made you go into that line of work I mean in your intro um it said you've got a great history in sort of gospel music and gospel singing and you know, what's it all about for you um it's for me it's about helping independent Christian recording artists to be to be on bigger stages, to reach more people, and to ultimately be able to minister, do what they do full time, and and be able to do it without benefit of a label or you know or big radio deals and and you know radio cross country radio. Um, so why you know, why is that, and all that why is that important to you um you know i you know i don't know anything about gospel music in fact in spite of having family members of being gospel singers <laughs> is that um you know isn't every recordings artist's dream to have a label to be part of a label or is that quite constraining and do you have to make sacrifices around your authenticity if you're part of a label yeah, you do. So historically, labels, what they do is um, a lot of the times what they do, and I won't say all labels, there's always exceptions to the rule, right? But generally, what they do is they bring an artist in, um, they they do develop them, which is a good thing. You know, they give them style, they give them branding, um, they give them, they have access to their, you know, state of the art studios where they can record their music and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but which is, you know, and that's, that's a good thing. The, the sad thing about wor- working with a label is that um, a lot of the time, um, depending on who you are, especially like a solo artist, if you're a choir you know, it's kind of no big deal, but as a solo artist, sometimes depending on what kind of a label you're with, you know, they don't want you to say the name of Jesus. They want you to look more sexy. They want you to sing, sing in a club rather than in a church, you know, different things like that. And they basically change your identity. And the reason is they feel like, okay, well, you will make more money for them if you're if you're portrayed as more of a secular artist. Yeah, I understand than, that totally. You know, and I think, artists. you know, I have known gospel artists really struggle um, with that, with sort of like remaining true to their faith and doing the thing they love to do and also making um, money from it. Um, how do um, people from the gospel face sort of like people in your congregations and how do they think about, you know, developing yourself to make money because that can be a a conflict as well can't it it is it's a conflict and you know and recently I've been doing a lot of posting online about about making money monetizing your ministry I actually spoke to a gentleman yesterday who said well why would I need to monetize and what is monetization and yeah you know I get yeah um it's for a lot of Christian people they've been they've grown up hearing um uh, it it is very difficult for a rich man. It's more difficult for a rich man to get into heaven than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. I've heard it. I've and, heard it. Right. <laughs> heard and then it. there's and then there is uh, money is the root of all evil, which is a misquote. Yeah. Um. You know. So we we grow up hearing these things, and then for somebody to tell you that, well, you should want more money. It's it's a conflict of interest. They yeah. Feel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I would like to put out there that that first that first uh, quote that I, I quoted in the Bible mm-hmm. where, where it said it is difficult is more difficult for a rich man. That's something that Jesus said is very difficult for um, a rich man to get into heaven um, than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. The very next statement he said was, but all things are possible. Absolutely. I love that. All things yeah. are possible. All things are possible. You should have that as your tagline. I know, right? You know, maybe I will have it as my tagline. Yeah, right. that would be really it's, good. That'd be really good. Yeah. So what would a client of yours get from you and what success have you had in your business? Well, clients will get from me strategy, the kind of strategy that they need to put together um, a, a marketing plan. Um they will learn how to brand themselves in such a way that they're not confusing people. And um, 
and have a strategy and a marketing plan and know all the different things that they need to to accomplish to lay the foundation for when they're releasing their music and also learn how to build a relationship with their fan base yeah i think that's you know that's really really important and because um there is a quote isn't there i'm not sure who it's from you probably know simone about you know you need a thousand true fans and right. to make um to make money make 100, to make a hundred thousand <laughs> dollars we're going to yeah. say dollars so um about eighty thousand pounds uk listeners so um yeah i mean i think that's really important and there's a bit of a dichotomy isn't there around making that money actually putting yourself out there and i know that i've struggled with that you know putting yourself out there because you want to make money from your business is sort of you know I'm, I'm a nurse and i've worked for the public sector all my life and there's a bit difference about working for you know but essentially for money and working for a public mm-hmm. sector organization which yeah. is for the you know the greater good but i exactly. think i think you can use your skills and expertise to help people that you want to help and, and it's with the best of motives but i also believe that you because of your expertise you deserve to be um paid for it absolutely it should be a win-win situation absolutely the client wins the customer wins customer wins and you win absolutely so um as i said before simone lives in the united states and um as you all know we've been going through the covid19 pandemic and um, i'm really interested in simone's experience from the of the pandemic from a, a u.s citizen's perspective and what it's like over there um it's isolating yeah (laughs) um you know it's we had we've had to deal with not only you know being isolated in our homes um all all live events being shut down yeah that must have Um, had impact on the gospel music industry surely it did absolutely especially um gospel artists who are also church musicians oh yes because churches are closed aren't they the churches are closed and they're not getting paid every Sunday to go in and, you know, and play the drums or play the piano. All right. Do do artists get paid in, in churches in America? Wow. They do. Yes, absolutely. You hear that Um, UK? (laughs) That's a lot of artists. It's a main part of their income. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that would really have an impact. Are the churches opening anytime soon? Um, I think there's still limits um, here on, on churches it's a bit it's a bit confusing in the united kingdom because we've just um so um i'm recording this in september 2020 we've just had some extra legislation that people aren't allowed to gather in more than more than six people aren't allowed to gather together either inside or outside there are some exceptions so like weddings and funerals and cinemas and pubs for strangely um but um it's a bit confusing and I, i'm still not clear whether churches are open or not are they open in america um, no they're not open here either people are doing um drive through churches oh that's so cool that's a thing <laughs> yeah um <laughs> have you been to one been doing i haven't been to one no um and i like have <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. A few people have been doing that, but most most churches are doing online services. And it's funny because so many people have refused to do online services really? before. And now they're forced to. Absolutely. And of course, you know, after this pandemic is over and we're allowed to leave our homes again, um, they're going to keep doing the online services yeah. because it puts them in front of people all over the world, not just in their local communities. Yeah, that's um, one of the things and that happened in healthcare as well. I remember um, in this time last year, I was doing a project um, in my job in the NHS. I traveled quite a large geographical area and I was doing a project trying to get people to do meetings online. And the benefits of that would be to save on travel expenses and tiredness and be more productive. And I was really struggling to get people to do that mainly um mainly people my age who were really worried about what they were going to look like on camera so um you know that was really interesting and then um the pandemic happened and shutdown happened and we did it in a week and you know i worked at home between january and september and everything was um 
online. So, you know, the, the the pandemic has been awful, but it's also allowed innovation and people oh, to yes. take op- opportunities with online. And it's really interesting to see that sort of work playing out in our communities because, you know, as you say, people before would not consider going to church online would they because a lot of a lot I know a lot in gospel church is about dressing up put on your blessed clothes you know what I mean seeing people it's an event it's an event absolutely (laughs) people dress you know to go to church Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a fashion show uh, yeah absolutely (laughs) but a part of it is community and communion isn't it really so and that is possible to do if you're very if you're very clever out on on online and you're getting i suppose what you really are going to church for you still can get that can't you and i think it's up to us to um think of other ways to get the community part and, and be able to show our best clothes maybe um Absolutely. that's and um, that's true so um simone you, you know you have um some health issues as well um um would you like to tell us about that yes i have sickle cell anemia and it has been it's been it's been a struggle yeah um you know i've had i actually just told my testimony since uh, september is sickle cell awareness month absolutely so Um, i don't know if it is all over the world but i will find that out actually and then i will do some promotion about sickle cell as well if it is because it's really important to do that yeah so what does that it's, mean um, for you um, in everyday life? And, and you know, what did that mean pre-pandemic? And what did that mean during the pandemic? Did it make a difference? Uh, yeah, it made a bit of a difference during the pandemic because um, I'm not able to, you know, if I, if I need to go to an emergency room or something, I'm not able to, um, I, you know, I just, I don't have... Um, people close by yeah. necessarily yeah. that that would be able to help me um, yeah. if I needed it. I think and one of the um, impacts of the pandemic, and I know this from members of my own family, is that ability to visit in, in the United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah you're not uh, you're thing. not allowed to take anybody in with you. And I know if you're unwell, you're not at your best about communicating what's best for you and consenting to treatment or even understanding what's being said to you. So that must be very, very, very difficult. I know I found that difficult with family members going to an emergency room and not being allowed to go past the front desk and then you know your loved yeah. one is going going off into wherever and you don't know what's happening with them and then you know it's not easy getting um, phone information from any organization never mind a healthcare organization and then with the nurses have got a lot of things to do so that must have been really difficult because I know that you did have to go to hospital and um, during the pandemic and even I guess even yeah, driving yourself sense. there is an issue isn't it really if you've yeah, got no one I've had to, to drive help myself. you yeah that's right. that's right and when you're when you're there and and no one is allowed to visit you know for me part of part of having good health is good mental health and absolutely. emotional health and absolutely not being able to have somebody there mm-hmm. with you mm-hmm. to cheer you up to hold your hand mm-hmm. to you know just to talk with yeah um, while the nurses and the doctors are doing their thing, um, you just you, you feel utterly alone. Mm-hmm. You really do, mm-hmm. and that's that's a tough, tough thing. It is, especially if your family aren't even around and aren't there to advocate for you. How right. has um, having sickle cell anemia impacted on your life? Because it's a condition you're born with, and I suppose mm-hmm. you would have been having to deal with that all your life, and you know um Simone's the same age as me well actually I'm a bit older than Simone is but I have to say but um you know does it get difficult as is it you no know, what is it different different from how it was when you were a child um it is it is. different as you get older and you know what do it you is. do to keep yourself healthy well it is um it, it seems to be I'm seeing I seem to have more problems as I get older yeah when I was a kid my biggest issue was back pain. Mm-hmm. That was that was my biggest issue, and um, and I, and the thing is, as a kid, I didn't really understand what triggered it. Yeah. Um, and so I think I would probably do things that kind of kept triggering it. Yeah. Um, but like strenuous exercise, you know, um, 
back when I was a kid, you know, we take the bus to school, yeah. and, you know, back and forth and stuff. And if we were kind of late for the bus and then we had to run for the bus oh, or before it would leave us, you know, uh-huh. as soon as I got on the bus and sat down, I would have a strong backache that would start right then and there. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. But yeah. And for people, as I get older, I know the triggers. Yes, of course. For people who don't know, and um, one of the things around um, sickle cell anemia is you have a thing called crises, which are extremely um, painful and need to be treated quite quickly. And Simone, you were telling me that sometimes it can be quite difficult to be taken seriously around pain relief and when you attend like, the emergency room. Can you tell me a little right. bit about that? Yeah, I mean... I don't know if I've been treated this way so far, so far I haven't, That's brilliant. but you know, I've heard from my friends that, you know, um, they'll show up at the hospital telling the doctors that they're in pain and they need medication and the doctors are skeptical and thinking that they're drug addicts and just here to get a fix. Yeah. You know, and that must be so Um, difficult and so demoralizing, especially if you're not well. Because pain does not show up on the outside of your body. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, you, it's it's not like you're bleeding, you have a cut or anything like that. Mm-hmm. People have to take your word for it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, as a as a as a person with sickle cell, mm-hmm. you know, I have to tell people I'm in pain. They can't see. No, that I'm in I know, pain. And, and pain is subjective, and you know, uh, different cultures and different communities experience and deal with pain in a, in a different way. And I think, um, I know as a healthcare professional, there are sort of, you know, cultural maybe misconceptions and stereotypes about certain communities and their relationship with pain. So you know, I know that can be quite yeah. difficult. And I think that's something, you know, I'm hoping that nurses and you know healthcare workers who maybe are listening to this podcast sort of can sort of like think about um that as they as they go forward um as well so um I, you know I thank you so much for sharing um your sort of medical history for me because that's quite confidential information um do you feel happy about sharing do you you know I guess it's I mean, it's definitely the, not the first thing you told me and it was important but do you share <laughs> um your sort of medical history with people because I think it goes a long way to understanding but you know it's difficult because it's private isn't it I usually only share it if a problem comes up yeah Um, And I guess that's really, it's really as a, as a, as a protection, you know, against, against me, you know, uh, maybe discrimination. Absolutely. I understand Um, that totally. Right. Because I've gone to, you know, job interviews and I don't want to go into a job interview and tell, tell the person interviewing me that I have sickle cell anemia and therefore I may be, I may uh, you know, be out sometimes because I'm ill uh-huh. or, you know, in the hospital uh-huh. or whatever. Uh-huh. I don't want them to look at me and go, oh, well, she's not going to be reliable. She's going to be in the hospital all the time. I know. So no, I can't hire her, I know. you know? And that's a, so, <laughs> that is discrimination. That in, and, you know, you should be able to, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to share your medical history at interview. And, you know, yeah. in the UK, um, you shouldn't be discriminated against um you'll be um, for any job or anything for doing that but unfortunately you know people being people that does happen and it yeah. is it is very difficult and I'd really understand why people don't disclose um, yeah. their medical I as the, uh, I yeah <laughs> I know I know okay I need to take a sick day I know <laughs> How do you manage um, your, because you, you're you still working full time at the moment while you're building up your business. How do you manage working full time and also sort of giving a lot to your business? Because I know you do give a lot to your business and I. Well, I try to be a disciplined person and, um, you know, I, I show up to work at 830 in the morning mm-hmm. and I work until like 430 or five normally. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, I, once I log off, I stop thinking about work. Yeah, that's a good thing and, to do. I didn't quite manage <laughs> that. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it is. I try to thing. take a break. Yeah. Yeah. And then do something, you know, I have a to-do list for my business. Yeah. And I try to do something, spend some time focusing on that, yeah. on my business and Brilliant. get at least one thing done every day. Brilliant. That's what I try to do. 
it doesn't always happen because you know i'm still i'm still working on my discipline but yeah i god is helping me yeah and he's giving me some tools that's brilliant <laughs> and how um so this is this this podcast is also about self-care you know how do you look after yourself how do you make time for yourself and sort of and nurture yourself as a human being because it's you know it's all very you know I know both you and I put quite a lot into our work and you know you know I I have you know I'm doing my business full-time at the moment but that always wasn't that wasn't always the case so Mm. you know how do you manage that um to sort of like take that time out what do you do just for yourself um nothing too extravagant I try to I try to keep to a morning routine when I get up in the morning, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, pray, uh, read something from the Bible, Mm -hmm. um, listen to an inspirational message. There's a a, a lady I like to follow on YouTube. Her name is uh, Terry Savelle Foy. Okay. Um, You know, maybe read for a few minutes, um, you know, and then um, my morning routine actually, and it incorporates music as well for me mm-hmm. music kind of gets me going yeah. gets me up and gets I remember me you moving. saying that so, yeah yeah um, so I like to incorporate music into that uh-huh. and then at other times you know if I'm feeling down if I'm feeling like oh, okay my life is a mess mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm doing all of this I'm overwhelmed you know I take some time out I call I call my friends I call my sister I call you yeah you know? I know um, I was just about to say yeah we have a chat yeah I know and um <laughs> it is for me too it's sort of like having that connection and I think that's one of the things and uh, one of the strategies in lockdown you know I have um organize zoom parties you know all over mm-hmm. the uk and i'm trying to organize one um all over the world and um, but it's difficult with time zones but um we manage to talk most sundays don't we and it is really yeah, it is yeah, really it's... good to speak to somebody that you've got connection with and something somebody in, in common with and i would really recommend that so Absolutely. um what would you how can people get hold of you if they want to if they want your help and advice and inspiration for their business well, I am on Facebook and Instagram. On Facebook, my uh, handle is Simone A. Henry. And on Instagram, it's Eshe Music, E C H E Music. Okay, that's cool. And um, Simone's got a really good um, Facebook group um, that you can join as well. And um, if you join, um, there's some freebies going as well so Simone it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you um, this morning it's really good to talk to you about your business and sort of getting that out there and um, I you know Simone's excellent and she's had some really good results with some gospel artists and I really admire the way that um, you're supporting artists outside the sort of main the mainstream to be authentic about their music and and their ministry is there anything um any tip that you'd like to leave us with either for gospel artists or for just us as humans <laughs> <laughs> well okay i can give a, a tip to uh, any gospel artists out there my tip is to be authentic be you and don't be afraid to tell your story that is how people will connect with you. Um, That's it. And I guess for <laughs> anybody else, a good tip would be to, um, well, the same, the same, because you never know how your story will inspire someone. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, you just, you just never know. Well, thank you so much, Simone. That is it's absolutely wonderful to talk to you as I do every Sunday and it's absolutely mm-hmm. wonderful to talk to you on my podcast you're my first guest and thank you so much for that and um, I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it and I know that a lot of people will get a lot from an international perspective on um, both running a business and also you know the gospel music industry so I think it's something that people are very interested in and don't know um, that much in about and that includes me and I grew up in a Pentecostal church so thank you very much and um very welcome congratulations again thank you Simone and um I'll put um Simone's details contact details in the show notes so thank you very much and um see you next time thank you bye-bye
Thank you for listening to The Dawn Jarvis Show. If you enjoyed this episode, there are two things you can do. Number one, leave me a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. It would mean so much to me if you took a moment out of your time to post your thoughts on the show. It will help me reach so many more people and help them with their well-being. Number two, subscribe to my email list, The Diverse Nurse Digest, using the link in the show notes. Until the next time, thank you and goodbye.